buckle up your damn seatbelts, because today I'm going to tell you how to sunstress your Hoya. Oh boy, uh, it's a Hoya. Today I'm going to teach you how to sunstress your Hoya. Okay, listen. This is an easy video. I didn't know it was possible until I tried it for my until I tried it for myself. Oh my gosh, is the easiest thing in the world. <laughs> TLDR, if you don't have time to watch this whole video, which please do because it helps out my channel, you're just gonna put a really bright light at your Hoya really close until it turns pink. <laughs> and now I'm gonna tell you about it. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing. I haven't filmed a real video in so long. Lord help me. Um, you're in the way, you know? How to sunstress your Hoya. <laughs> is you're gonna take a grow light. My grow light I think is like 30 watts and I got it from Amazon for $15. I had three of them but one of them broke. So you're just gonna take it and if this is your Hoya and this is your light, that's like how close you want it to be. You can't just do it to any plant. Most plants don't sun stress. It really is only plants that are tough. So I know Ripsalis and Cactus can sun stress and Hoyas but philodendron do not sun stress. I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure in the wild there are cases, but in the house, if you were in a point of grow light this close to your philodendron, it would the leaf would die. You know, and, and I tried it on accident. I didn't even know I was doing it. Oh, alocasia don't like the light being this close to their face, but Hoya do. So what I generally do do, I have all my Hoyas on one table, they're all over there, and all of them just get my three lights beaming down on them. Day, all day, all night, I'd never turn them off, which is terrible, my electric bill is really high. We get pink Hoyas, and isn't that just kind of what life is all about? Yeah, and then how long does it take? So it takes a long time. I noticed my Hoya started to sun stress after probably a month of doing that. And some Hoyas are different than others. Like some Hoyas will sun stress a lot faster. Like it was really easy to get the variegated Wayetii to sun stress. Like so easy. Like I pointed the light at it and it basically just turned pink. The ones that have been more difficult is Rebecca, Hoya Caudata. I haven't seen Curtisii sun stress at all. Same with Carnosa. Uh, my Fungi Eye doesn't sun stress. Calistophylla does but it requires a lot of light. Cow Yai hasn't sun stressed. It's really the ones that, like my Hoya Pinky, which I got from Unsolicited, my Hoya Elagoria Anum, which I also got from Unsolicited. Both of those sun stress really, really easily. Hoya Skinneriana, which I got from Reclamation PDX, sun stresses really, really nicely. My variegated Hindu ropes, the Mauna Loa sun stresses, but it, it's not enough to like even show you guys yet, so. And then the Hoya Carnosa Compacta Variegata also sun stresses really nicely. And I do have two of those. Um, I can't wait to give you guys like an updated houseplant tour of my hair collection because I'm, I, I'm genuinely happy with every single plant that I have, which has never really happened before. I'll link the lights that I got below um, from Amazon. Everyone keeps asking me about these grow lights. I really only had them to uh, keep my apartment brighter for my plants in the winter because during the winter time my apartment gets no light because in Idaho, or I should say in Boise, when it's winter time and fall time, it's just constantly cloudy like all the time and you don't really get any light. So whereas my plants don't need any help in the summer and spring for photosynthesis, in the winter, they really, really, really do need help. <laughs> uh, which is why I originally moved all my plants to my bedroom because it was so cold. Like, the windows were just sucking all the heat out and the plants weren't really doing well. It's not something that I'd recommend is like, the best grow light in the world because it's not, but it, they're definitely good for what you would need them to do. Here's a list of all the plants I've sunstressed because I said that some were harder and some were easier, but here's all the Hoya that I've sunstressed. Both of my Hoya Carnosa Compacta Variegatas, Hoya Wayetii Variegata, my Hoya Skinneriana, Hoya Calistophylla for a short time, my Hoya Caudata, it's supposed to be green, but now it's just purple. My Hoya Rebecca, Sunrise, I got to get even brighter than when Unsolicited sent it to me. <laughs> Who am I missing? My Hoya Pinky. Who am I missing? I know I'm missing one. That's all been over like the last three months of like really, really, really intensive light. I found that Hoya that are classically just kind of green and not tropical, like Hoya Chelsea, Hoya Carnosa, uh, Fungi, those ones don't really stress. 
and I don't know if it's because they don't originate from the same place. Oh, my Hoya, I knew I was forgetting one. My Hoya species affinity Bertoniae. Sunstress is like crazy. It's probably like the easiest one next to the way out eye to get to Sunstress. And I have two of those now. I wish that there was more to talk about. There's honestly not. Um, Sunstress and Hoya is really simple. You just have to kind of do it. You just kind of have to buy a light, buy a bulb from Home Depot. There's like $9 or $13 grow lights that I used to use all the time before I bought these new ones. Um, and they work really, really well. I never got anything to Sunstress with them but they do work well I don't like the purple lights or the blue lights or the pink lights I really like the normal white kind of warm full spectrum light uh, so that's why a lot of things on Amazon like haven't really been for me I haven't really used them because I like the white light not the colored light I thought that was a thrift, but it's just a piece of paper. Ugh, Chris is so handsome. Wow, I can't. If you have any questions, like, at all, please ask in the comments. I live in zone 7A, B, so the advice that I'm giving is going to be different for if you live in a different zone. So, uh, take it with a grain of salt. Like, if you live in a place like Arizona or Texas or anywhere really warm, you're going to be able to just put your Hoyas outside. Like, I know Lesia from Lesia's Leaves. She just puts her Hoyas right outside, and they kill it. Like, they do so good. All of her Hoyas are sun stressed and it just like doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so thank you for watching. Please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and tweet me at Play Me Ashley. I hope that this was helpful in some way. It's hard when people really want a video and it's not like a long video. Hopefully you guys don't mind a short video because all my videos are generally pretty long. But yeah, I hope that I was able to help you out. And I'm just gonna do a quick demonstration on how I actually set up the lights. Okay, so here is my Hoya table. It is also my um, terrarium table, and right now Reed's Polaroid table. And I'm just going to show you where I clip the lights so that you guys can see for yourself how I do it. So, and Raven's sitting right there too. Raven, hi! Okay. Here we go, baby. Are you ready for- oh boy, jeez. Be careful. So I clip it right here, just like right on the edge. And then I, honest to God, have them like this. Um, and as long as you don't have anything that's not Hoya, it won't burn the leaves. It just makes them really, really sun stressy. But I really like, like here's the distance. It's like, like this, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's really not far away from them at all. That's the only way I've really gotten them to sun stress. So I hope that this, oh, the dinky's kind of stressing just barely. It's hard to show you guys because all of my stressing is artificial light. So it really doesn't show up very well at all on camera. Uh, like I can see the pink here, but y'all can't really see the pink right there. So that's it. Hello. For this part of the video, I just wanted to give you guys a cute little happy update. So basically, Chris and I are getting married on next Sunday, August 2nd, and I'm very excited. <sighs> I'm out of breath. <laughs> and on top of that, guess what? We found a house to move into. So we are going to be moving at some point in the next two months. I don't know when, but we are and we secured the house, kind of. We still have to sign the lease, but our application got approved. And we get to sign the lease this coming Monday. So you could say I'm pretty excited about that. Other than that, life has been very stressful. We ended up <laughs> having too many crying parties, you know, me and my mom over the wedding planning. So we decided to jointly hire a wedding planner even though <laughs> there is only like two weeks left before the wedding. So that's something that you can do in case you didn't know that. No, but seriously, my mom and I were crying so much over the stress of the wedding that we were like, you know what? Screw it. Let's just hire a wedding planner. So also I wanted to tell you about where the direction of this channel is going to be kind of heading in the future. I think we are going to be doing every other day uploads. I keep trying out daily uploads and it's just so all over the place. It's really hard to figure out what exactly YouTube likes and what it doesn't like. So I don't know, <laughs> but we aren't going to have a strict schedule like a lot of other channels do. We're just going to be a go with the flow kind of YouTube channel. Also, I just wanted to say 
Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and tweet me at PlantMeAshley. You can become a patron at the first link in the description. It costs $1 to get into the Discord where we do a bunch of heckin' cool stuff. And then, you know what? The rest of it's just fun after that. We talk all the time. There's like a billion things to do there. So please become a patron, help a girl out today. And also you get extra content like all the time, like every single day. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to be a plant person and go to a nursery when you're sad. Bye.